advisor in the Internet Society. Paul is going to um, uh, talk for 25, 30 minutes. Hello, everybody. My presentation is in English, but I'm going to speak Portuguese. It's a pleasure to receive you. To I, I am so happy that uh, this topic was chosen to discuss it today. Thank you for the presentation, for introducing me. I'm Paula. I work for the Internet Society in Brazil, but also at a global level. And today I'm going to speak of the fragmentation of the Internet in Latin America, bringing you a hands-on case and also um, talking in general how we work with fragmentation around the world. As to the challenges of the Internet and the existing risks, we understand that those challenges require an immediate action, and the Internet Society has worked to defend the Internet against decisions both from governments and corporations that threaten the Internet and um, uh, threaten the openness, the, the global uh, nature, and uh, the security of the Internet. So part of our work, in addition to defending the Internet, and uh, um, we also work um, to make it grow. So you know that uh, um, our goal is that uh, or to, to in increase the number of people who are using the Internet, because almost half the world doesn't have it. So we work on growing the Internet and empowering people, attracting, engaging, and uh, strengthening our whole uh, community and the individual members. So this debate today, well, we reached uh, the um, uh, our situation uh, in the fragmentation of the Internet. Be um, and we had developed the Internet way of nurturing, identifying the critical properties and enablers of the uh, and uh, we uh, and building a toolkit to uh, um, uh, assess the impact of Internet of draft uh, r uh, proposals and uh, uh, policies. From uh, 2022 to 2022, we implemented this toolkit and we assessed the impact of a range of policies and we started identifying through the uh, digital sovereignty project, we started to see how the policies get grouped and how they uh, build um, a world of trends. And in 2023, we are working against uh, the Internet fragmentation policies, uh, building a narrative and advocacy tools, and uh, also appealing to our community uh, champions and mitigating the threats effectively. The current situation of uh, fragmentation involves uh, policies and decisions that render the Internet less open, uh, less global and interoperable. These are proposals that further uh, standards that diverge from the current one and protocols that uh, are not consistent. And uh, they have the policies and protocols that have implications uh, for the Internet of Global Zuckers architecture and compatibility of systems and networks, and they end up making decisions with a range of impacts, uh, economic, social, pol uh, political, learning, and uh, telecommunications at a global level. In that regard, I brought you this practical case so th that we can discuss the uh, zero uh, tariff uh, array um, uh, policy. This has to do with the commercial decisions that uh, offer de data, uh, limited data packets with specific advantages for a number of uh, apps or packets of apps uh, provided by the uh, providers. This is a practice that we see frequently in Latin America and also we bring the example that the 
practices used for blocking were banned in other jurisdictions. So uh, jurisdictions such as the European Court of Justice that uh, used uh, zero tariff as uh, a banned service and that is really against European law of a roaming and uh, open internet. This commercial practice, we see it as against the today's internet as it is, and also it is contrary to the equalitarian uh, treatment uh, and uh, the uh, requirements of the European uh, regulations in some countries in Latin America. So this, uh, <coughs> this limits specifically the access and the specific applications. And so the people um, we uh, wanted to continue to uh, promote an open internet. And you see that the fragmentation of the internet is a scenario that places the internet not as a global network, but as isolated networks that will uh, be increasingly difficult to be interconnected or interoperated. <coughs> And those political and corporate decisions in, uh, about uh, the design of the internet and its operations set a dangerous precedent, and uh, very often it may be irreversible. Nesse sentido, eh, eu estou aqui para apresentar esse caso e também para se juntar eh, a so. Ah, justamente fortalecer. Não, não tem áudio. Ah. So the first, tá? the first stage is precisely to speak about these initiatives and proposals that we have, so that we can put this in our radio and understand how these. Trends have reached different regions in terms of initiatives and policies. So, as from here and using the analysis tool, we're going to analyze these trends and policies and develop a strategy of actions through advocacy for initiatives such as these that might affect the internet as a global network that is connected and open and most of all to work jointly that is why today we have a tool that will be launched shortly for the entire community this is the open internet advocacy this is a network that precisely will bring together all the threats to the internet and threats to the fragmentation of the internet so that can work jointly in order to identify these trends and have an incidence on these. So this is what I had to share with you. Thank you very much. And I am available for any questions you, you might have, either from participants in person or from the remote participants. Thank you. Gracias, Paula. Pero bueno. Thank you, Paula. Any questions here? Yes, a big round of applause for Paula. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paula. We now invite the second speaker, Pablo Ruiz Díaz. Pablo. So I think Paula is not in the room. So let us go on to the next speaker. Otherwise, 